Hey, what's up you guys? It's Haley, and this is not a normal video that I put out on my channel, but this week and this day, if you're watching it, the day I upload this, is a very um, important day in my life, and I figured I'd do something fun, fun, for it. Today is a special day. I never really talk about it on my channel. I talk about it on my Instagram and my Twitter, like it's not a secret necessarily, but I've never like sat down and recorded a video and been like, this is what's going on in my life. <laughs> so, spoiler alert, five years ago today, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a type of cancer. So yeah, it is my five year diagnosis anniversary, January 28th, which is insane to me that I've been on this roller coaster for five years and honest to God, five years making it chef's kiss like I'll take what I can get diagnosed at 17 I'm not gonna go into detail about like my whole like learning I had cancer story because that would take forever if you guys want another video on that I would be happy to but for this five year anniversary situation I posted on my Instagram to ask me questions about my story and I thought I'd answer those and I kind of wanted to talk about five major life lessons that I've learned in the past five years. And I'm gonna get myself a mother friggin' cake. Um, I'm just gonna get started because I'm afraid this video is gonna be too long if I don't. So here goes nothing. This is feels like a good starting point because someone asked me how did I feel when they first told me I had cancer. I felt like I'm not gonna sugarcoat shit. Um because that's just not authentic and my personality is very brutally honest. I'm not even gonna lie to you. When they first told me I had cancer, my world fell apart beneath my feet. I felt very unstable and I felt like everything I thought I had control in my life completely lost on me, like out of my control. I no longer had a grip on myself. I literally had to jump into a whole other world that I didn't understand at all in literally no time. Like, got diagnosed literally the next day I was having my port put in. I was scared, but most of all I felt like, I felt very hopeless at the very beginning because I had no idea what everything would entail. I thought cancer meant death. And like, I know that's intense, but it doesn't. Like, after a long time, it, it really doesn't mean that, but when you're going into it brand new, it low-key does. <laughs> um, I feel way differently now. Another question was, what were your highest and lowest points during your journey with cancer? My lowest point was like a month, or not even a month, like two or three weeks after I got diagnosed. Um, I had my first chemotherapy, and then not long after that, I got an infection in my colon. I think it's in your colon. You would think I would know this, but I blocked that shit out. It's either in your colon or your stomach. I think it's your stomach. Is that the same thing? So my lowest point was then because I had to actually go to the ER with a lot of pain in my stomach and I had colitis, which is an infection. And literally, not gonna lie, life flashed before my eyes. Um, had to have emergency surgery, had to have ECMO in my neck, that's what the scar is from. Had a, a lot of shit went down, lowest point in my life, don't remember the two weeks, I was like completely out of it, didn't talk, had to write on whiteboards, frustration, um, confusion, uncertainty, I had a lot of amazing doctors, thank God, and my family was amazing. Um, but that was the lowest point. It was a really touch and go there for a while. Um, so yeah, it was just really scary. My highest point of my journey was probably when I got to ring the bell the first time in October of 2016 where I was done with my chemo and I was cancer free. Blah, 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 long story short, that didn't last. I relapsed a couple times. But that, that moment just reminds me of how much support I have. Like, at, like 40 people were there, and it's incredible, and it astounds me. My Make-A-Wish was pretty cool where I got to go to San Francisco. That was a high point. It fluctuates. I have low points, I have high points, and that's just, that's just how everything goes. Another question is, how have you dealt with setbacks and disappointment along the way? Oh, God. Um, 
I've been disappointed a lot. Not gonna lie to you. And it's hard. It's, it's fucking hard to deal with disappointment. I've relapsed three times. Um, and when, when you do treatment, you think you, you're only gonna do it once. In reality, that's not the case and may never be the case for you. Um, which is a hard thing to grapple, grap, grapple? Grasp? It's a hard thing to grasp. I don't think grapple's a word. Maybe it is. I don't know. We don't have time for grammar. How have I dealt with setbacks? I would say taking it one day at a time. Because at the end of the day, especially in the sense of relapse, is you have zero control over what happens. Like, you are monitoring yourself with your doctors every three weeks or whatever. So that that spot that reappears or that infection reappears, it's hard to really prevent that. Um, so you have to kind of accept that you have no control and that's a really hard thing to do. I always just learn how to adapt. Setbacks with school where I had to, I, I relapsed and so I had to take, I had to stay home my sophomore year of college. Adapt, do online school, still moving towards my degree. So it's all about adapting and figuring out ways to still get to your goals without like really sulking in the disappointment. I think having goals and having something to strive for instead of focusing on the stuff that's holding you back. What did you do to take your mind off negative thoughts? Anytime I had a negative thought, I tried to distract myself with music, TV, my family being silly. Um, just really trying to um, accept that those negative thoughts are there, like recognizing, be like, oh, that's a negative thought. I feel that way. And then moving past it. Like, ignoring it is not the right move because it'll just come back. And then if you ignore it, it'll probably come back stronger. So making sure that you accept that those thoughts are there and then kind of realizing that and then you know doing things to cope with those so whatever makes you happy and makes you not think negatively what was the biggest lifestyle change you had to make how I finished school and college um, I also think that a big lifestyle change was knowing how much energy I can I can put into everyday things versus people who don't deal with chronic illness can just do things without thinking about it. It's freezing in my car, so I'm sorry I have to have heat on. Like, I will freeze. It is snowing and it's 30 degrees and I have no heat in my car. Okay, anyway, you have to think before you do. Like, if you're gonna go on a hike, you have to tell somebody like, hey, I have chronic fatigue. We may need to take more breaks than usual. The lifestyle with college is that, like I said, I had to think more about how I was gonna finish my degree without falling behind. So I just had to think a lot more, <laughs> which is like shitty because I'm an overthinker and I have bad anxiety. So like thinking isn't always great for me. How did music um, help me throughout my journey initially and in the middle and now? In the beginning, it was everything. In the middle, it's been everything. And now it's everything. Music has been a consistent coping mechanism for me throughout my entire journey. When I was going into my transplant in 2017, Reputation just came out on CD. And I listened to that every day in the hospital. Um, so yeah, things like that. Like, I needed that. Somebody asked me if there was any silver lining which is a fascinating question for me. My honest answer at the beginning was probably no. I didn't, I didn't see a silver lining to having to go through intense treatments that I knew that would make me feel like shit. There was no silver lining to me going bald at 17. There was no silver linings, in my opinion. I think, when I think about it now, the silver lining is that cancer doesn't mean bad life if that makes sense. Like, being diagnosed with cancer is shitty. It is not great. I would not wish it upon my worst enemy, but the silver lining is that cancer is not a defining moment of your life. Yes, it molds a lot of things. It doesn't have to be meaning that it's a bad life. Yes, you can feel shitty, but right now, like, I am pretty damn healthy and living a pretty full life. Although we're in the middle of a panorama pandemic right now, so I don't know. Cancer, I have it, but I'm not letting it take over the way that I live. I'm just adapting. 
The key is adapting, people. Somebody asked me if there's anything that people should avoid when they talk about cancer with me or my journey in general. Honestly, I'm pretty open about it if you ask me. I think it's about the way you ask me. Overall, I wouldn't say that there's a like a one thing that's like, you can't talk to me about it. Um, I'm pretty open, I like to share a lot um, because I think it's important to talk about because cancer is such a notorious topic and very uncomfortable. Um, but no, I don't think there's anything you can't really say to me. Um, just don't be rude about it and be respectful. So we have some questions that deal with like favorite nurse, favorite therapy. Favorite therapy was recreational therapy. It's like you play games and like I love playing games. Art therapy? Y'all, art therapy changed my life. I never used to paint or draw that much. Art therapy, once I started doing it in the hospital, we did collaging, we did a quote calendar, we painted, we decorated my whole room with like drawings and art that my, my family did and we decorated a whole window with like art. It changed my life, it brightened my life, I love it. And my favorite nurse, I've had so many nurses, I can't pinpoint my favorite, I've had so many who I love. And not gonna lie, I've had a lot that I have not liked. One that I, I will never forget, ever. Her name is Tina. It was like right before my hair was gonna fall out too. And I remember she did a spa day for me where she just kinda like made my hair like not fall, like push it up and she did my fingernails and she just made me feel like Great. She actually gave me a bracelet um, a couple weeks later. Oh God, I could cry thinking about this, but it, it's this bracelet. It says, be brave. I wear it every day. I don't take it off ever. So I've had this bracelet on for like four years straight. And she gave me that and a little beach snow globe because she knows I wanted to go to the beach. Oh, I love her. I miss her and I just, about like two or three years later when I was in the ICU again for like low sodium or something, she was there again. And just seeing her made me so happy. I love her so much and I miss her. I hope you're doing good, Tina. So another question is about how cancer has impacted me. So about my friends, family, and my view on life. With my family, it's just made us closer. Like insanely close, weirdly close. Like I'll tell them anything, we really talk about anything. It's like open book type of relationship now with my family. I love it so much. Um, I'm so happy for that. That's like one of the biggest um, pros that have come out of my cancer journey. I just know who stuck around and I knew who I wanted to be friends with. And my friends now are like my shining light in my life. And I love them so much and they've always been there for me. And the way it impacted my view on life is that you can't take anything for granted. And I think that I know how to live in the present because my future is so unstable. At one point I didn't know if it would even exist. I know that's sad and like kind of scary to think about, but at one point I really thought 18 was it, you know? I think I'm just good at living in the present and my view on life has been just to live in the present and don't take moments for granted and, and love and live in the moment. So there's another question that kind of goes along where it's like, what would you have done differently in your life now that your view has changed? And like I said, I just, I feel like I just live more in the present. So the next question is, what's something you consider good that came out of your cancer journey? And I love that she put good in quotation marks because that's how I view it, is like good in this way that's like, what's something that's changed for the better? Because cancer is not good by any means. So I think the best thing that came out of this was the relationships I've gotten with people. It just makes my relationships that much more meaningful to me. And I think that's the best thing that's come out of this. I've gotten a lot of good opportunities from it too, and a lot of inspiration. There's pros to everything and there's cons to everything. So I can't sit here and say that everything is bad because that would be a lie. Um, is there anything you can't do now now since having cancer. My walking ability, um, I had to gain my strength back because I had neuropathy in my feet at one point, which is just like losing like the nerves in your foot, so you can't really feel that you're walking on the ground. But anything I can't do per se, not really. Um, I can still do everything, it's just more like can't I can't walk as fast as maybe other people. Um, and I might lose breath 
quicker. Like, there's just things like that, but nothing that I don't think I can't do, per se. How did you feel when first diagnosed? I kind of talked about that, just like scared and confused and wishing I was somebody else, basically. Do you have a favorite pastime while going through treatment? Playing cards. So, my family and I would always play cards, like Rummy, Uno, um, really any type of card game or any board game in general. What was the one thing you became the most grateful for when you were diagnosed? Honestly, at first I was grateful for nothing, but um, now that I think about it, I'm definitely grateful for the opportunity of being able to be um, treated at Nationwide Children's Hospital. Um, since I was 17, I was just at the cusp. I literally four months before my birthday. At some point, did you think your life was over? Yeah, a hundred fucking percent. I thought my life was over finito, down the drain. I really, I, I didn't know if I was going to die. I didn't know how long I had left. Cause when you watch movies and like TV shows about cancer, you always get like, you have six months to live. So I had no idea. Um, what that entailed at the beginning so I really did think my life was over socially I was scared that my life was gonna change too much like my friends would just fucking leave my f like you know like obviously that that was dramatic but like at the point it felt very dramatic and real like that so yeah I did think my life was over in multiple different facets do you wish you had different do doctors or nurses to work with you um, overall, I've had really good experiences with doctors and nurses, but there are some times where I had really bad experiences where I was like, get me a new nurse, um, I need somebody else to put in my IV because you fucked up already and we're not having that today. There's been a couple times where like nurses will come in and see me and be like, let me go get somebody else because I already know that I messed up last time. So like, we love that. We love a self-aware nurse who knows when to let loose of the reins and give someone else who has better capability to do things so I don't have to go through that twice. How did you get past the feeling, why me? Honestly, I don't know if I ever will get past the feeling like, why me? Because it's such an in-depth question and like a confusing question to be like, well, what the fuck? There are like a billion people in the world, like, why me? It's a question that you'll never get the answer to. Um, I like to put it as like, I was admitted into cancer college and that's just what happened. Like, they picked me out of millions of people. Um, my cancer is not genetic, so it's even more like confusing to be like, well, how the hell did that get in there? Like, we just don't know. Our bodies are weird. I don't think I'm ever gonna get over the question, why me? Because I still ask myself that, especially in really hard times where I'm really struggling. I'm like, why me? Why is this happening? Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't think I can get past that and that's okay. Like we can't, like you have to sit in those emotions and I think it's better to sit in those and better understand them than like trying to ignore it or trying to like forget that those feelings are there. How do you stay so positive? Um, I don't think there's another option. Um, whenever I would first relapse, I would always be like, that's it, I'm not being positive this time, I'm negative Nelly, I can't do it. But that always goes away. Right when, when something happens in a moment, you're frustrated, you're angry, you're stuck in that, then you absorb it, and a couple days later, you're like, well I have no choice but to fucking be positive and be hopeful, because without that, healing doesn't occur. Like half of healing is positivity. I think you have to just bunker down and realize that that's the only option. And it's such a waste of time to be negative because negativity does not help you heal. Has having cancer influenced what you would like to do for your career? Yes, because I would not want to be a part of the medical field. Um, it's too intense. I think it would give me too much PTSD. So I don't want to be in the medical field, but I would love to work in mental health areas because I'm very passionate about why mental health should be important and should be um, in lives and stuff. So yeah, I think it has influenced me to stay away from things and to maybe pursue things I wouldn't have in the past. But I still like to read and I still would love to be in publishing. That's my number one. But like, it also has encouraged me to maybe publish my own book about my own story. So 
different things have influenced other things so we'll see what happens right now we're in a pandemic so like I'm unemployed and still figuring things out <laughs> someone asked me what's the hardest thing going through that like cancer mentally for me the fact that like I would never be a normal person again and like they always talk about like new normal being like yeah like you're gonna have a new normal life like cancer will just be a part of that normality but like in reality that's not normal for people like to have cancer it's just not normal it's common but it's not normal another thing mentally for me was isolated I felt so alone I felt like nobody understood my life anymore and that I would never be able to relate on other levels because I had this big ugly like mark on me you looked at me bald and you probably could assume I had cancer like that just was a very hard thing for me to deal with especially losing my hair at such like a prime age for like beauty which actually is gonna lead me into talking about how I I got out of isolation somebody asked me to talk about my experience with like cancer friends and people I've met through that world I just I just can't wait to talk about this person I have um, when I got diagnosed like I said I felt so isolated I mean I I felt like nobody understood me anymore and like my my friends that I've known forever like they didn't know what I was going through and it was it was hard for me to tell them that because they weren't gonna understand they just weren't and that's okay like I'm not asking them to like learn everything and try to put themselves in my shoes but it just I needed somebody to be able to understand without me explaining so her name is Mary I actually found her through Twitter because one of her tweets like I'm a bad bitch you can't kill me vibes like blew up or something about her beating cancer and I think we got diagnosed at the same time but she's a couple years younger than me and I found her and my whole life changed because she's five years cancer free and like I the immensity and like of love and like pride I feel for this girl that I haven't even met in person who lives in a different state than me is crazy. We text, we talk a lot. Um, she changed my whole perspective. Like she just lives freely and honestly. And it just gives me so much hope that one day that that will be how I live. Meeting her and knowing that I could go to her and be like, I'm having this problem with like my cancer journey and she would immediately know what I'm talking about. It's so comforting and made me feel less isolated and less like nobody understood me. Finally met someone who could literally understand like chemotherapy and like PTSD and anxiety and scanxiety and all these things that just like people know the terms for but will never understand how it makes you feel mentally, emotionally, and physically. Like she is amazing and she's changed my life kisses to you mary i love you like i said i don't wish people to go through this but to meet people who have and mary actually started this like facebook group that was like um chronic illness and school like people who were going through school with chronic illness and i met a lot of people there and we all were like going through the same things and it was it was it was comforting that's like the best word i can describe if i could tell a young adult who just got diagnosed one thing what would it be it's a bad day not a bad life and you're gonna have bad days but you have to think about the grand scheme of things and yes it could feel like your life is falling apart and it probably will at some point but it's a bad day, it's not a bad life. You will have good times in the darkness and like you have to hold on to that shit and like put it in your pocket and bring this shit out when you feel crappy. If you're just diagnosed, I just wanna say I'm sorry too. Like I don't have advice because everyone's experience is different, but I wish you so much love and courage. Um, how do I feel now five years later? Does it get less intimidating? Five years later, I sometimes feel stuck in a loop because I've gotten like one year cancer free and then I kind of hit relapse again. So I feel stuck in a loop a little bit. Um, five years later, I feel more at peace with that loop that it's not the end of the road every time I relapse. Does it get less intimidating? I would say every time I hear bad news, it's still intimidating, but I get over it quick, more quick. The first time I got diagnosed, it took me a while to like 
really come to peace with what I was dealing with and now it, it takes me less time because there's I'm wasting too much time sulking in this energy that I don't want to carry around. Less intimidating is weird because it's like cancer is intimidating. It just is. That's just how it lives. So I don't think I'm less intimidated. I'm just better at moving forward and not letting that intimidation like scare me so badly. What is one thing you would tell yourself five years ago? I think this is the last question. I would tell myself kind of the same thing. Like it's a bad day. It's not a bad life. I don't know. I think I would tell myself to stay the course. I think I would tell myself that you'll graduate college and you'll do a lot of things that you probably thought you would never do because of your cancer diagnosis. So just stay the course and and just get through the shit because light is on its way and bad it's not a bad life. You're just gonna have shitty days like the rest of the world. They may just look different because you're in chemotherapy or you're doing this or that, but your life is good. Like overall, your life is good. So don't get stuck on the fact that you have cancer. Kind of don't let that define you. Five years ago, me? Oh my God, so small and so naive. I love you. That's another thing I would tell her is I love you and you're strong and I'm not gonna cry right now so but I love you so yeah so I was gonna go buy a cake but it's nasty out so I think I'm gonna go buy a cake later this week so it doesn't go bad so I can actually eat it on the 28th I guess what I'm gonna leave with you guys today is to live in the present love in the moment um, don't squander the time that you have with people and just fucking live. I don't know what else to say. I feel like so sappy and inspirational right now, which like I don't like feeling that way. Um, Cause like it can get too mushy and I'm like Ugh. So I know this video wasn't funny, but like I hope you enjoyed anyway. It was really nice to talk um, about it. I don't know, never talked about it for this long. Five years is a long time and I'm still kicking. I'm hoping for another 50 so yeah don't compare yourself to other people live your life how you want live it freely live it bravely and I hope you guys enjoyed this video you can give it a thumbs up this if you share one of my videos or comment or like or do anything for one of my videos let it be this one because this is important to me I love you guys see you next time I make something Bye.